In the last video, we showed the equivalence between the scattering amplitude that was part of the stationary scattering state solutions to the time-independent Schrodinger equation and the differential uh, scattering section, which we said was the central quantity in a scattering problem. In this, uh, in, over the next few videos, we're going to develop a way of estimating this scattering amplitude for the case of a central potential. So this is the case when uh, a potential only depends on the radial distance and not on the uh, angular orientation. So it's only a function of R. In this video, we're going to develop a representation for free spherical waves that will constitute uh, partial waves, what are known as partial waves that are uh, the central quantity in estimating or in coming up with a solution to estimate the scattering amplitude. So from our treatment of the hydrogen atom, we know that for a central potential, the time independent Schrodinger equation has solutions of the following form. So there's a, uh, a radial component, which is sometimes called U, uh, as, which is a function of R over R, the radial distance, times this angular component, which is given uh, or is quantified by the spherical harmonics. This quantity, this satisfies what's known as the radial equation. This is given by minus h bar square to mu. Again, mu is the rest mass or the, uh, the reduced mass, sorry. Second derivative with respect to r of u plus our central potential plus h bar square over two mu l L plus one over R squared. And this is equal to the energy of our particle times U. L over here is the orbital angular momentum. And uh, E is the, the energy of our particle. If we're looking outside of the range of our scattering potential, which we had uh, quantified with this label A, so far enough away from the potential, which means that V of R is equal to zero. Uh, our particle is considered to be a free particle. So it's not confined by any potential or it's not influenced by any potential which means that it only has a kinetic energy, which is given by this, the momentum squared over 2m. The momentum is again given by the De Broglie relationship P is equal to h bar k. In this case, uh, we can simplify the radial equation. Okay, so we've set V is equal to R and we'd factor out uh, U from the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we have the energy H bar square K square over to mu. So it should be mu. Uh, we can cancel out all of these H bars and mu's. To 
end up with an equation that looks like this. If we let, if we make a change of variables, so if we let rho is equal to kr, this simplifies uh, further. So this is now a function of rho. Uh, this k square, when this r square become a rho square. And we just have u of rho on the right hand side. Okay, so this is uh, a differential equation that's describing a free particle in spherical coordinates or the radial component of a free particle, uh, the radial component of the wave function of a free particle in spherical coordinates. It turns out that this is uh, a well-known type of differential equation. The general solution uh, is a linear combination of what are known as spherical Bessel functions. These are lowercase j and lowercase n, or sorry, this should be L. So this is uh, general sum constant times R J L K R plus another constant R and L K R. Some important properties of these functions that will be useful to us is uh, the spherical Bessel function of the first kind, J L of K R. This one uh, does not diverge as we get closer and closer to the origin. Conversely, uh, K R, J L, K R, this tends to sin kr minus l pi over two as r tends to infinity. For the spherical Bessel function of the second kind, n sub l of kr, uh, this one diverges as we get closer to the origin. This will be important to us later on. And Uh, this tends to cosine kr minus l pi over two as r tends to infinity. And these asymptotic forms will be useful to us because we're focusing a lot on the behavior of our scattering uh, solutions far away from the potential. So in the limit where r gets really, really big. Okay, so to build up our general solution for the Schrodinger equation in, uh, for a central potential. So in, in spherical coordinates, this is a double sum over all values of L and M. So of the orbital angular momentum and the set component of the angular momentum. Of what I'll denote as psi KLM. K over here 
is parametrizing the energy. And this is the sum over uh, this general wave function that we had described before. Uh, this part, we just saw what the solution was. This was a superposition of spherical Bessel functions. And now with this R and the denominator, it cancels out the Rs that we had in the numerator before. And we still have our spherical harmonics over here. The last simplification that we can make is because our potential is spherically symmetric, we can eliminate any dependence on uh, the polar angle phi. Uh, the reason we can't eliminate dependence on theta is because in the context of our scattering problem, the incident wave breaks that symmetry because it's, we said we're, it was traveling along the z-axis. Eliminating any phi dependence is equivalent to taking m always equal to zero. in which case we only have one sum to do instead of two sums. And this is now a spherical harmonic of L and zero of theta. Uh, since in general, the spherical harmonics uh, of L when M is equal to zero, this is related to the Legendre polynomials by square root of 2L plus one over four pi, PL cosine theta. So this is the Legendre polynomials. Uh, we can simplify this down Okay, so this is uh, the spherical wave representation of any wave function, uh, psi, in spherical coordinates. And this is valid for all r, uh, theta, and technically phi. Okay, we haven't made any approximations uh, about uh, of we haven't made any approximations other than to say that these are for uh, free spher spherical waves. Um, so this is a representation of any psi. So uh, what this means then is we can in general express any wave function in terms of this superposition of these spherical waves. Uh, these waves are what are known as the partial waves. And in the next video, we're going to use that to express our stationary scattering solutions in uh, this basis.